Okay, so it's been a while. Well, maybe not a while. What was it only like a? I think it was only like a week since I recorded that last set of footage, and since then there have been a multitude of uh, advancements in the base. Um, particularly, we're gonna start here because this is where I spawned in. Uh, these are a cryo tube system, which is hooked up to our oxygen generators, and it's actually um. We have an airtight hanger over there, and that's how we can seal this room off, and then it'll pressurize the room, and we can take our helmets off if we wanted to. Um, we haven't been because, yeah, we haven't been doing it because it's actually, we've had some problems where, like, even if, though we're in a pressurized room, we'd still die. Um, so we also have a fourth member of the team that's joined us recently. Uh, he's here. It's Jensen, and he's hardly here because he's just had a kid, so uh, he's got other things to worry about. Um, but yeah, so our cryo tubes are now all fully hooked up to the oxygen chamber, or the oxygen tanks below, and so we actually have this nice, cool little apartment. Um, you, we used to have doors, but we're all a bunch of fat fucks, and we can't fit through the doors in this game. <laughs> so. <laughs> So that's uh that's kind of why we have what we have here, okay? But it's a cool room. I I built it's it. A, and... It's called America Door. It's called America Door. <laughs> yeah. Um, cause we I also shaped the room cause I was trying to you know I want to work on making things look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So I kind of rounded off the corners here, tried to make it slick. I put some windows in cause you know it kind of looked cool. But yeah, and then let's see, what else What else has changed? Ah, yes. Since the last time, uh, in the video literally a week ago, we have the assembler system is now up and running. So we have all eight assemblers going. They all have, was, I believe these are efficiency, uh, not efficiency, productivity modules. So they assemble things really fast. And I we've actually had to add two additional Accum large storage containers for, for accumulators for all the bars because Gree's been going around in the penetrator and he's been eating asteroids left and right like fucking Galactus. So, uh, because of the added additional input, we've also had to increase the number of arc furnaces we have. So we've tripled the number <laughs> since the last video. Um, those are... You know, I've actually uh, considered... Adding more? Then we might want to reduce the number of uh, productivity modules. You think on so? Refineries. For what purpose? It's sucking down a lot of power. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can so also. Power has do... become a concern more recently. Power is well, now. A, it's now a concern. Well, we're we're going through uranium faster than before, which. Eh, because of the weight change. Yeah. Um, the and since the uses a lot of uranium. Yeah, so I guess we should also address that. Uh, last Thursday, they released a patch for Space Engineers. And we have considerably... It, it's affected our base quite considerably. Um, in the realm of our ships, which are over here. I don't know why the lights are off, but... Apparently, they, they we're having lighting problems. Um, all of our ships consume a lot more uh, uranium now to be powered... As well as every ship that's in the game now is affected by its total mass. Um, so that means our large capital ships like the Penetrator have problems with maneuverability when it's under maximum cargo load. So prior to this, even if the, the Penetrator was like max cargo in every compartment and every drill... It would maneuver in the same fun in the same way, no matter what. We have we have fixed the problem of it not stopping. No, it will stop now. Yeah. So, but since the patch, but because of that problem, to be able to stop it, we it burns through uranium. Yeah. So uh, since the patch, we've had to ad effectively add a lot more thrusters to compensate, um, as you can kind of see here, and. At the same time, um, we do have some issues when it's under full load. <laughs> like, it, it definitely gets a lot more sluggish. Our construction ship, the Melder, also had to go through a few changes as well. Change working on it over here. 
uh, the Melder has a similar problem. So if you notice, there, we don't have as many large cargo containers on it anymore. Um, because, for the simple reason, same exact same reason. Um, well, I guess I, I kind of missed the footage from uh, yesterday, so... But we are disassembling what used to be a gigantic 3D printer we had. It was a work of art. But these guys are destroying it because they're asses. Not as effective. <laughs> it didn't work. Version did, 1. Version 1 didn't work. So we're going to engineer the shit out of it, making more versions. But uh, maybe next week we'll have an update to that. Um, let me see. Oop. Oh, as another big change since the last time we've uh, played or I've recorded is we've moved the server off of my computer and we're actually renting a dedicated server which was an adventure in itself to configure but totally worth it for all parties which means i don't actually have yeah. to keep my computer running all the time um it's nice and it's our own little it's our own little place and it's, it wasn't too expensive so really like it um, of course, the other thing that I guess the elephant in the room is that we've sealed off the crevasse that used to be an opening in our asteroid. So we've completely sealed it with uh, with heavy blocks that took fuck tons of iron, but the penetrator took care of that for us. And we also have a trans a cargo system that's going all the way around the outside of the sh the shell of our asteroid. Um, originally, this was for defenses against asteroids. And so we've made a slight modification to our assembly system. So we've added over here another block. And in this block, we it's an ammo feedback loop, but technically I can feed back whatever I want back into the main accumulators to the top. But that's how we've been pumping ammo up to turrets around us. Alright, and then I guess we should go over here. Uh, we have a kind of tiny door. This was really me just fucking around trying to figure out uh, making like a small hangar door to let smaller ships in and out, you know, messing with things. We were still trying to figure out how we were going to implement like a big door to open and close our, um, our facility. We'll call it a facility. It's home. It's home to us. Ooh, so this is actually kind of cool when it, like all the lights are out. Uh, we actually have spotlights everywhere that are shining down, but I don't know, something's going on with them. Um, let's see here is the miner. Ah, uh, yes, this is our blast door. Uh, Gree constructed. It's, uh, how does this thing work again, Gree? It's simple, right? It's just a two piston? Two pistons on each side, pushes the blast doors, the wheels are there to keep it in track. We tried it without the wheels and it, the door was flopping a little bit. But the yeah, minute we put bounces. the wheels on the top tops and bottoms it, it it'll shut. You know stay shut without bouncing. Yeah. So we, we had a this door itself was also something that went through a few iterations, you know, from us. Um I was trying to use a rotor system but that was That caused a lot of problems. It caused a we lot had... of problems that, that we couldn't sync it up properly and this is general physics tomfoolery. Um, then Gree got this double piston system to kind of start working. There was a little instability, but then the tires concept started to work. So we're going ahead. We went ahead with that, and it's looking good. It opens and closes. Um, the main reason why we had this door was for to, was originally to prevent uh, asteroids from coming in and wrecking our shop. But you know, that hasn't been a problem, really. Uh, because we rarely for actually get... For some reason, get... they don't like to go in that way. I don't know why. They yeah, we don't... for it to hit, and it doesn't like to go that way. Yeah, we have meteor storms that come from all other directions but there. But, you know what? I'll take it. Which is, uh, we also kind of put some solar paneling up here. Actually, we could probably go back and maybe redo that some more. So I think they got hit. Yeah. They need to be fixed. Uh, oh, yeah, they got hit. Yeah. But, I mean, th this is just additional power... Prior to the patch, we had so much uranium that it wasn't nothing was a big issue. But now, well, ever, to be now, fair, we still we have just, a lot of uranium. Yeah, yeah we really haven't fast. mined uranium, really. Yeah, so there, we, it's still out there. 
we kind of had like a every now and then we run low on a particular resource and then we go overboard on gathering it um so that's better fun. to have more than none at all that's a good point okay and over here this is our uh defense grid version i guess the ones around the base is like version two because uh, you can kind of see all the holes where uh, every one of these uh, conveyor holes there used to have a turret. And we had like a phalanx that surrounded our entire structure. And we're like, yeah, we're fucking impenetrable now. But That's the asteroids... Yeah, the asteroids had another plan for us. And, um, was as you it can the see, asteroids? It was the retarded turrets. Yeah, the turrets aren't very good at tracking, and they waste a lot of ammo, and they end up shooting each other for the most part, you know. Yeah, as that's the biggest by. problem. They're like, oh, look, so, let's just keep shooting even though I'm shooting through my own defense. Exactly, and so that's one of the biggest problems we actually had is uh, friendly fire. And so version 2 is why I put them on these random platforms that some are higher, some are lower, to hopefully prevent that. But that didn't work as well. Um, we so... Could. So, it worked a don't little bit. It worked better. Careful with this stuff. We don't want to break too far back. Uh, this is our Oh yeah, tube. I'm not going any farther back. This is this, where the tube is going to come out. Yeah, so this is our main uh, line in tube. Uh, if you, in the prior video, it wasn't even completed. And it didn't have this shielding around it. It didn't have this sweet ass green fucking light. Yeah. Ah shit, another meteor storm. Um, so yeah, this green tube is this is what feeds into our main cargo system so that hasn't changed at all but we did have a massive influx of stone from all of the gr from all the drilling so we're like shit there's all this fucking stone we're gonna do all of it and then we devised this system this is mainly Gree's handiwork on this one i think Chang helped a lot on this one too but we basically have drilled out actually yeah both of them were drilling uh hand drilled by the way, they hand drilled a little tunnel system uh, fr from the conveyor from the main accumulators out and to over here where we have a solo gravity generator, which is I'll put my stuff back on. It actually has a slight gravity that's pulling away from our station and we have connectors here that pull out and eject all stone and we have a sorter block that pulls stone directly to them. And we eject them out, and all is well in the world. We get rid of all of our goddamn stone, all 80 million tons of it. I get whenever we send out the penetrator. So, I guess the those floating square platforms were version 2 of our defense. No, they're, yeah, version, technically version 2. Yeah. yeah, they were like our quote-unquote version 2 defense, uh, which was... Version 1 floating platforms. Yeah, exactly. version 1 floating platforms. Um, because rather than keeping everything close to our uh, main base, we decided to put satellites out. And the satellites... Oh, shit. And so we put satellites out there, and those satellites will fire from a safe distance and hopefully fire away from us and not damage anything. But, of course, we're always proven wrong on that. Well, I actually need to move them out further, but to do that, we need more platforms, actually. That's the problem. Well, so we have... Yeah, so we, we need to basically... And so here is the latest iteration of our base defense. This is the patented Ching... Ching box. <laughs> and it is a very simple design, but it is... It has a sort of elegance to it, really. There's only four turrets... Four turrets surrounding a central platform that has thrusters that provide thrust in every general direction. I believe there's a flight chair in there too. I think. Is there a flight chair? I thought about making them fully, well, not fully automated, but remote controlled. So that's yeah, an so option still. We, we still haven't played around. Yeah, so we it would just be an, an antenna and then a remote control block. But uh, it, it's a it's a work in progress. So. We still haven't really played around with programmable blocks or remote controls uh, yet. So it is something that we, we're looking to, to do. Um, so these are very portable, very just like portable anti-meteor stations that we can print out very quickly 
in our new, soon to be new and improved 3D printer. And uh, we'll try to keep us protected. Um, one of the downsides to these, to, to this uh, concept though, is we have to go and we need to resupply these uh, periodically, which isn't too bad. Oh, these are all shooting. It's Charlie everywhere. Woo! I'm a, we get a front row so seat. Like, of everything in. I was gonna say, where's all this latency coming from? And then I realized it's meteor storm time, apparently. <laughs> um, but as you can see, our base generally takes a few hits here and there. You know, it's uh, it's inevitable when you're floating around in space. My true dream is to have an automated repair drone just go around and continuously fix the outside. <laughs> would be would be very convenient. Would be very convenient. But uh little yeah. to no work involved. <laughs> that's the that's the goal, is to be as lazy as possible in the game. Well, not necessarily, it's to it, have no, the most stuff. And you, you have to get efficient to do that. Yeah, and that that requires you to be lazy. Because when you're lazy that's you not... figure out ways of like, okay, how can I not do more work? Yeah, it's it's like, not really okay, we'll do it this crazy. way. I didn't show off the mole. I forgot about him. The mole is basically a small version of the penetrator. It's um, it was born out of necessity <laughs> because we we tried to use the penetrator more to to carve out a place for ourselves in this asteroid with mixed success and failure. Um, and at least one instance of complete catastrophic failure. <laughs> <laughs> it's destroyed most of the base. And I didn't get to see it. I was so upset. Well, to be fair, we didn't see it either. We only saw the aftermath. Yeah, yeah so... It was my fault. It was, but it was, it was glorious. That was also part of trying to get the door working, too. Yeah. And so, gravity. Yeah, so after that happened, after that incident, we no longer rely on gravity in here. And, uh, yeah. Maybe what we might do is, um, I'm still thinking about how I want to do this. Maybe I'll do like periodic, like uh, update videos for like small things that we do. Maybe not as big of an up, like single update. It'll be like when we try to do our first tests of this new 3D printer, and we'll have iterations. It'll be like a, uh, it'll be like that scene from RoboCop 2 when they introduce the new RoboCop 2s and they all keep failing. <laughs> It would be like that. Hopefully with less suicides. And people getting shot. <laughs> but yeah. That's it for now.